Hello. So, tonight is a bit different than uh, my previous Let's Plays. Tonight I am going to stream Let's Play Learn Get Branching. And this is a game that's supposed to teach you how to use Git. Now, for those of you who don't know, Git is what is called version control software. So, let's say you're writing a program and you're in a team. Uh, <clears throat> what will happen is you write uh, some, some of the code and you commit it to this sort of repository of code, right? And then, uh, let's say someone else wants to improve it, they, they check out a copy they make their improvements and then they sort of check it back in uh, and in this way lots of people can work on code at the same time but uh, they don't interfere with each other while doing it they don't accidentally overwrite each other now I'll be now the reason I'm doing this uh, I just started a new job recently and it turns out that I'm going to have to be the go-to source for Git uh, in my group. Now I've used Git plenty before, quite successfully, but occasionally I do still have a bit of trouble uh, <clears throat> with uh, visualizing what's happening in Git. So, let's play this game and see if it helps me. And if it doesn't, eh, I streamed something to YouTube. Who's going to complain, right? And I'm going to read all of all of these because, you know, that's important. So, welcome to Learn Git Branching. Interested in learning Git? Well, you've come to the right place. Learn Git Branching is the most visual and interactive way to learn Git on the web. You'll be challenged with exciting levels, given step-by-step -step demonstrations of powerful features, and maybe even have a bit of fun along the way. After this dialogue, you'll see the variety of levels we have to offer. <clears throat> if you're a beginner, just go ahead and start with the first. If you already know some Git basics, try it s some of, of our later, more challenging levels. P.S. Want to go straight to the sandbox next time? Try out this special link. Okay, so I'm not a beginner. Let me stress that. I'm not a beginner. But I am going to start at the beginning but just cause, just I mean that's how I play things I start at the beginning and go through everything so let's see 4 8 10 15 18 we've got 18 levels here and 15 here so uh, 33 levels total starting with introduction to git commits A commit in a Git repository records a snapshot of all the files in your directory. It's like a giant copy and paste, but even better. Git wants to keep commits as lightweight as possible, though, so it doesn't just blindly copy the entire directory every time you commit. It can, when possible, compress a commit as a set of changes, or a delta, from one version of the repository to the next. Git also maintains a history of which commits were made when. That's why most commits have ancestor commits above them. We designate this with arrows in our visualization. Maintaining history is great for everyone working on the project. It's a lot to take in, but for now you can think of commits as snapshots of the project. Commits are very lightweight, and switching between them is wicked fast. <clears throat> Let's see what this looks like in practice. On the right, we have a, have a visualization of a small Git repository. There are two commits right now, the first initial commit, and one commit after that, uh, C0 and C1. <clears throat> that might have some meaningful changes. Hit the button below to make a new commit. So, so you can see that we got a new commit there. There we go! Awesome! We just made changes to the repository and saved them as a commit. The commit we just made 
has a par parent, C1, which references which commit it is based off of. Go ahead and try it out on your own. After this window closes, make two commits to complete the level. Okay, so, uh, like I've said, I've done this many times. Like that. Boom. Yay, I win the level. So that's how this is played. <clears throat> um, hmm. <sighs> hmm. How do you go to the next, uh... Ah. Great job. You solved the level in two commands. Our solution uses two. Awesome. You matched or exceeded our solution. Would you like to move on to branching and get the next level? <sighs> One moment, I'm going to close the window here. I think I'm getting some smoke or something in here. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm just I'm just gonna set up a fan and try to get the air out of this room. I think I got some smoke. Uh, I'm in British Columbia right now. The whole place is on fire. <laughs> well, the, well, far from here, but there's enough smoke to turn the sun red. Ugh. Hi, I'm sorry about that. That was... Oh. Oh, okay, let's try this again. Git branches. Branches in Git are incredibly lightweight as well. They are simply pointers to a specific commit, nothing more. This is why many Git enthusiasts chant the mantra, branch early and branch often. Because there is no storage, memory overhead, uh, with making branches, it's easier to logically divide up your work than have big, beefy branches. When we start mixing branches and commits, we will see how these two features combine. For now, though, <clears throat> just remember that a branch essentially says, I want to include the work of this commit and all parent commits. So, let's see what a branch looks like in practice. Here we'll create a new branch named New Image. Huh. Okay, usually when I see this diagrammatically, it sort of actually is a branch, but okay. There, that's all there is to branching. The branch new image now refers to commit C1. Let's try to put some work on this new branch. Hit the button below. Oh no! <laughs> the master branch moved, but the new image branch didn't. That's because we weren't on the new branch, which is why the asterisk was on master. I'm going to go back and, and check that. So yeah, the... Uh, 
Okay, yeah, so the asterisk is on master, and master's what moved. <sighs> Let's tell git we want to check out the branch with git checkout name. This will put us on the new branch before committing our changes. So, check out the new branch, and then commit. There we go. And it would probably branch if someone else were on master and working on it. Our changes were recorded on the new branch. Okay. Okay, you are all ready to s get branching. Once this window closes, make a new branch named bugfix and switch to that branch. By the way, here's a shortcut. If you want to create a new branch... Okay, yeah, I know this. Oh, no, no, I promise to read it. Not, not everyone watching. Oh. Hey, Federation scum. I'm not... Uh... <laughs> Federation... That's a great name. Federation scum slash FTL is noise. Uh, thanks for watching. As you can see, I'm not actually streaming FTL tonight. Uh, I'm streaming something called Learn Git Branching. So if you want to learn Git Branching, now's your time to watch. <clears throat> Anyhow, by the way, here's a shortcut. If you want to create a new branch and check it out at the same time, you can simply type git checkout dash b and your branch name. So, that's totally what we're doing. Boom! So, yeah, solved it in one command. Early levels are going to be easy, I'm sure. Come on. I want to go to the next level. Here we go. Great job, you solved the level in one command. Our solution uses two. I'm uh, guessing they branched and then checked out. It happens, okay. Awesome, you matched or exceeded our solution. Uh, would you like to move on to merging? Hell yeah. Branches and merging. Great, we now know how to commit and branch. Now we need to learn some kind of way of combining the work from two different branches together. This will allow us to branch off, develop a new feature, and then combine it back in. The first method to combine work that we will examine is git merge. Merging in git creates a special commit that has two unique parents. A commit with two parents essentially means I want to include all the work from this parent over here and this one over here and the set of all their parents. It's easier with visuals. Let's check it out in the next view. Here we have two branches. Each one has one commit that's unique. This means that neither branch includes the entire set of work in the repository that we have done. Let's fix that with merge. We will merge the branch bug fix into master. So git merge bug fix. Whoa, see that? First of all, Master now points to a commit that has two parents. Uh, if you follow the arrows up the commit tree from master, you will hit every commit along the way to the root. <clears throat> this means that master contains all the work in the repository now. Also, see how the colors of the commits changed? To help with learning, I have included some color coordination. Each branch has a unique color. Each commit turns a, a color that is blended uh, is the blended combination of all the branches that contain that commit. So here we see that the master branch color is blended into all the commits, uh, but the bug fix color is not. Let's fix that. So here we go. So git checkout bug fix, git merge master. Since bugfix was an ancestor of master, git didn't have to do any work. It simply just moved bugfix to the same commit master was attached to. Okay, uh, now <clears throat> all the commits are the same color, which means each branch contains all the work in the repository. Woo! To complete the level, do the following steps. Make a new branch called bugfix. So we're getting complicated now. Check out the bugfix branch with git checkout bugfix. Commit once. Go back to master with git checkout. Commit another time. Merge the branch bugfix into master with git merge. 
Remember, you can always redisplay this dialog with objective. Okay, okay. This is this looks easy though. So, uh, git checkout hash b bug fix. Uh, git commit dash m. Uh, let's see. Um, hello. Uh, git checkout master. Git commit dash m. Goodbye. And uh, git merge bug fix. We're already on master, so. Boom. You solved the level in five commands. Our solution uses five. Great, great. Would you like to move on to rebase introduction, the next level? Hell yeah. The second way of combining work between branches is rebasing. Rebasing essentially takes a, new s a set of commits, copies them, and plops them down somewhere else. While this sounds confusing, the advantage of rebasing is that it can be used to make a nice linear sequence of commits. The commit log slash history of the repository will be a lot cleaner if only rebasing is allowed. Let's see it in action. Here we have two branches yet again. Note that the bug fix branch is currently selected. Nice. We would like to move our work from bug fix directly onto the work from master. That way it would look like, they're, like mm -hmm. these two features were developed sequentially. Okay, I'm going to read that again for my own benefit. Here we have two branches yet again. Note that the bug fix branch is currently selected. Yes, it is. We would like to move our work from bug fix directly onto the work from master. That way it would look like these two features were developed sequentially, when in reality they were developed in parallel. Let's do that with the git rebase command. Git rebase master. Awesome. Now the work from our bug fix branch is right on top of master, and we have a nice linear sequence of commits. Note that the commit <coughs> C3 still exists somewhere. Uh, it is a faded appearance in the tree, and C3 uh, apostrophe is the copy that we rebased onto master. The only problem is that master hasn't been updated either. Let's do that now. Wait, I'm going back. I'm going back. Get rebase master. Okay. Now that we are checked out on the master branch, let's go ahead and rebase on to bug fix. There, since master was an ancestor of bug fix, it simply moved the master branch reference forward in history. To complete this level, do the following. Check out a new branch named bugfix, commit once, go back to master and commit again. Check out bugfix again and rebase onto master. Okay, this is easy. Uh, git checkout dash b. Can I close this? Bugfix. Git commit uh, da dash m. Hi. Uh, git check out master git commit uh, hello okay git Rebase bug fix? Was that how? No, no. I messed up. Undo? Ah. Get check out bug fix 
<clears throat> Get rebase master. There we go. Ah, just forgot the sequence. You solved the level in six commands. Our solution uses six. I guess it didn't uh, count undo. Would you like to move on to detach yo head? Oh dear. Let's try it. Moving around in Git. Before we get to some of the more advanced features of Git, it's important to understand different ways to move through the commit tree that represents your project. Once you're comfortable moving around, your powers with other Git commands will be amplified. First, we have to talk about head. Head is the symbolic name for the currently checked out commit. It's essentially what commit you're working on top of. Head always points to the most recent commit, which is reflected in the working tree. Most git commands which make changes to the working tree will start by changing head. Normally head <coughs> points to a branch name like bug fix. When you commit, the status of bug fix is altered and this change is visible through head. Let's see this in action. Here we will reveal head before and after a commit. So git checkout c1, git checkout master, uh, git commit, git checkout c2. See? Head was hiding underneath our master branch all along. <clears throat> Detaching head just means attaching it to a commit instead of a branch. This is what it looks like beforehand. And now it's... Okay. To complete this level, let's attach head from bug fix. One sec. Okay. And attach it to the commit instead. Specify this commit by its hash. The hash for each commit is displayed on the circle that represents the commit. Okay, so that was easy. Yep, yep. So, uh, <clears throat> a repeat of what's going on for those of us just joining us, like FTL is Noise and Fighter Fight Gaming, aka Draxus. Uh, basically, in my uh, new job, it looks like I'm expected to be the uh, teacher for Git for all of these, you know, non computery types. And while I've used Git plenty before, I do occasionally have trouble visualizing what's going on. So I'm playing Learn Git Branching in the hopes that uh, it will make me good enough to <clears throat> uh, write up a nice instruction manual and gu gu guide these people through learning how to use Git. Uh, some of them have never used it before. The PhD student I'm currently working with uh, has never used it before and thought we might be using something like uh, OneDrive or uh, Dropbox for our uh, project, but uh, that ain't going to work in this environment. <laughs> we need version control. We need real version control. So uh, let's move on to relative refs now. Uh, and, and also, uh, if you weren't here for the first part of the video, I'm reading all of this, uh, you know, just, just for to make sure that I know it all. Relative refs. Moving around in Git by specifying commit hashes can get a bit tedious. In the real world, you won't have a nice commit tree visualization next to your terminal, so you'll have to use git log to see hashes. Furthermore, hashes are usually a lot longer in <coughs> the real git world as well. For instance, the hash of the commit that introduced the previous level is... Well, oh, I'm not reading that. I'm not reading that. Oh god. Uh, it doesn't really roll off the tongue. The upside is that Git is smart about hashes. It only requires you to specify enough characters of the hash until it uniquely identifies the commit. So I can type 
fed to instead of the long string above. Like I said, specifying commits by their hash isn't the most convenient thing ever, which is why git has relative refs. Uh, they are awesome. With relative refs, you can start somewhere memorable, like the branch bug fixer head, and work from there. Relative commits are powerful, but we will introduce two simple ones here. Moving upwards one commit at, at a time with uh, the caret sign, and moving upwards a number of times with uh, tilde number. <clears throat> Let's look at the caret operator first. Each time you append that to a ref name, you are telling git to find the parent, mm -hmm. of, parent of the specified commit. So saying master caret is equivalent to saying the first parent of master. Master caret caret is the grandparent, second generation ancestor of master. Let's check out the commit above master here. Boom. Okay. Boom. <laughs> they say the same thing I do. Boom. Done. Way easier than typing the commit hash. You can also reference head as a relative ref. Let's use that a couple of times to move upwards in the commit tree. So check out C3, check out head up, uh, get check out head up, get check out head up. So okay. Okay. Easy. We can travel backwards in time with head. To complete this level, Check out the parent commit of bug fix. This will detach head. You can specify the hash if you want, but try using relative refs instead. Okay, this is this is going to be easy. It's git checkout uh, bug fix caret. There, done in one command. Boom. <clears throat> Aren't we awesome? I'm going to be a git master. The tilde operator. Say you want to move a lot of levels up in the commit tree. It might be tedious to type caret several times, so git also has the tilde operator. The tilde operator, optionally, takes in a t trailing number that specifies the number of parents you would like to ascend. Let's see it in action. Let's specify a number of commits back with tilde. Boom. So concise, relative refs are great. I don't know who's typing up this tutorial, but damn, I like how they type. Branch forcing. You're an expert on relative refs now, so let's actually use them for something. One of the most common ways I use relative refs is to move branches around. You can directly reassign a branch to a commit with the dash f option. So something like git branch daf, dash f master head tilde 3. Okay, I'm going to read this to myself one more time. You're an expert on relative refs. Uh, one of the most common ways I use relative refs is to move branches around. You can directly reassign a branch to a commit with the dash F option. So something like this. Uh, moves by force the master branch to three parents behind head. <coughs> Let's see that previous command in action. Oh, okay. So that, okay, that basically rolls back master. We're getting into stuff I didn't know before. This is not something I've seen uh, in any of the manuals, really. Uh, <clears throat> or reference pages, I should say. There we go. Relative refs gave us a concise way to refer to C1 and branch for forcing dash F. Uh, gave us a way to quickly move a branch to that location. <clears throat> now that you have seen relative refs and branch forcing in combination, Let's use them to solve the next level. To complete this level, move head, master, and bug fix to their goal destinations uh, shown. Okay. So. Hmm. Crap. What was the command? Give me a moment. Um...
using a hint. No. Oh well. Oh wait, you can... Huh. Just a suspicion. Okay. Give me a minute here. I'm going back through the tutorials a little. Okay, this I know. This is when I, sorry, I went back a lesson. Just give, give me a moment to read that over again a bit. I might not have been paying attention as well as I want to believe. Okay. Let's see. So, that's easy git branch dash f okay Did I get something wrong there? <clears throat> so, you get to watch me be a bit confused about Git right now. Oh, psh. Yep, nope, it's because I'm being an idiot. Okay. There we go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and, um... There. Only knew the hash. Oh, this is what I needed to see while I was doing that. Okay, so... That was, that was not my proudest moment there. But let's continue, and uh, hopefully, I, <coughs> hopefully I've learned how to use branch dash f by now. So, you 
you solved, etc., etc. Uh, reversing changes in Git. Uh, g give me just a second. Sorry, my computer has this weird thing because one of the cables is slightly loose on something. Don't ask. There are many ways to reverse changes in Git, and just like committing, reversing changes in Git has both a low-level component uh, and a high-level component. How the cha so reversing changes in Git has both low-level component staging individual files or chunks, and a high-level component how the changes are actually reversed. Mm -hmm. Our application will focus on the latter. There are two primary ways to undo changes in Git. One is using git reset, and the other is using git revert. We will look at each of these in the next dialogue. Git reset reverts changes by moving a branch reference backward in time to an older commit. Uh, this is, in this sense, you can think of it as rewriting history. Git reset will move a branch backwards if the commit had never been made in the first place. Let's see what that looks like. Nice. Git moved the master branch reference back to C1, now our local repository is in a state as if C2 had never happened. Git revert. While resetting works great for local branches on your own machine, its method of rewriting history doesn't work for remote branches that others are using. In order to reverse changes and share those reverted changes with others, we need to use git revert. Let's see it in action. Weird! A new commit plopped down b below the commit we wanted to reverse. That's because this new commit introduces changes. It just happens to introduce changes that exactly reverses the commit of C2. With reverting, you can push out your changes to share with others. Okay, that's interesting. To complete this level, reverse the most recent commit on both local and pushed. You will revert two commits total, one per branch. Keep in mind that pushed is a remote branch and local is a local branch. That should help you choose your methods. Okay. Hmm. So git reset local. No, 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 wait. That's what I. I'm on the branch, so it should do it to that anyway. So. Is it git reset local? Let's try this again. Nothing happened. Hmm. I misread something, probably. So let's go through that a bit faster this time. Yeah, git reset just takes what you're on and moves it back. Git revert takes what you're on, moves it forward, so... Reset is what they have, right? I, I'm not. I'm not imagining this. <sighs> okay, one sec. Let, let's take a closer look at Git Reset. Oh.
Okay, so git reset um, Oh ho ho. No, uh, no, I'm missing an argument. There we go. <clears throat> Would you like to move to Perry Ch Cherry Pick Intro? Yes, yes. <clears throat> so far, we've covered the basics of Git. Committing, branching, and moving around in the source tree. Just, th just these concepts are enough to leverage 90% of the power of Git and repositories and cover the main needs of developers. That remaining 10%, however, can be quite useful during complex workflows or when, or when you've gotten yourself into a bind. The next concept we're going to cover is moving work around. In other words, it's a way for developers to say, I want this work here and that work there in precise, eloquent, flexible ways. This may seem like a lot, but it's a simple concept. The first command in this series is called git cherry pick. It takes on the following form. Git cherry pick commit one, commit two. It's a very straightforward way of saying you would like to copy a series of commits below your current location. I personally love cherry pick because there's very little magic involved and it's easy to understand. Let's see a demo. Here's a repository where we have some work in branch side that we want to copy to master. This would be accomplished through a re could be accomplished through a rebase, which we have already learned, but let's see how cherry pick performs. That's it. We wanted commits C2 and C4 and get plot them right down below us. Uh, s simple as that. To complete this level, simply copy some work from the three branches shown into ma shown into master uh, to see which commits we want by looking at the goal visualization. Okay, okay. So, git cherry pick. I'm gonna try something. just because I'm curious. Bug fix. Side. I, I, I know I'm not doing it quite like they seem to be doing it, but I just want to see what happens if I do this. Another. Ha ha! I think it's working. It's working. <sighs> you solve the level in one command. <clears throat> Our solution uses one. It's to be expected. Get cherry pick is great when you know which commits you want and you know their corresponding hashes. It's hard to beat the simplicity it provides. I didn't use hashes there. You'll note I did not use hashes. <laughs> I uh, I used, uh, what, what were they called? Relative references, I think. I'll go back and look that up. Yeah, relative references. Or relative refs. But what about the situation where you don't know what commits you want? Thankfully, Git has you covered there as well. We can use interactive rebasing for this. It's the best way to review a series of commits uh, that you're about to rebase. Let's dive into the details. 
All interactive rebase means is using the rebase command with the dash i option. If you include this option, Git will open up a user interface to show you which commits are about to be copied below the target of the rebase. Sorry, uh, I need to read that again to myself. All interactive rebase means is using the rebase command with the dash i option. If you include this option, Git will open up a user interface to show you which commits are about to be copied below the target of the rebase. It also shows their commit hashes and messages, which is great for getting a bearing on what's what. For real Git, the UI window means opening up a file in a text editor like Vim. For our purposes, I've built a small dialog window that behaves the same way. When the interactive rebase dialog opens, you have the ability to do three things. You can reorder commits simply by changing their order in the user interface. In our window, this means dragging and dropping with the mouse. You can choose to completely omit some commits. <coughs> this is designed by pick. Toggling pick off means you want to drop the commit. Lastly, you can squash commits. Unfortunately, our levels don't support this for a few logistical reasons, so I'll skip over the details of this. Long story short, though, it allows you to combine commits. So, reorder commits, or pick. When you hit the button, an interactive rebase window will appear. Reorder some commits around, or feel free to unpick some and see the result. So C3, C2, C5. Yeah. Boom! Get copied down commits in the exact same way you specified through the UI. To finish this level, do an interactive rebase and achieve the order shown in the goal visualization. Remember, you can always undo or reset to fix mistakes. So, uh, get... Pick dash, uh, was that it? I got it wrong, didn't I? I didn't pay attention to the most important thing. Lay your knowledge on me again. I'm obviously a slow learner. Wonder if that makes means I'll make a shit teacher. Rebase dash I. git rebase dash i over here. Thank you for giving me that anchor. And let's see, we want 354. Like that. Boom. <laughs> so I re need to remember that. I'm, I'm going to have to review this. I'm going to have to do this again, but uh, next time I do it, I'll uh, prob probably be taking notes and writing stuff down. This, this, this is a great way to sort of get yourself familiarized with many of the more detailed areas of Git, though, so I'm liking this. <sighs> Grabbing just one commit. Here's a development situation that often happens. I'm trying to track down a bug, but it is quite elusive. In order to aid in my detective work, I put in a few debug commands and a few print statements. All of these debugging and print statements are in their own commits. Finally, I track down the bug, fix it, and rejoice. Only problem is that I now need to get my bug fix back into the master branch. If I simply fast-forwarded master, then master would get all my debug statements, which is undesirable. There has to be another way. We need to tell git to copy only one of the commits over. This is just like the levels earlier on moving work around. 
we can use the same commands. Get rebase dash. dash okay. <clears throat> this is a later level, so we will leave it up to you to decide which command you want to use. But in order to complete the level, make sure master receives the commit that bug fix references. So, get. I'm going to use cherry pick. I think that should work. Did it not? Hmm. go. I need, need to make sure I get my uh, merge order right. That's going to be big. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to whittle it down. Huh. Would you like to move on to juggling commits the next level? Hell yeah. Here's another situation that happens quite commonly. You have some changes. New image and another set of changes, caption, that are related, so they are stacked on top of each other in your repository. The tricky thing is that sometimes you need to make a small modification to an earlier commit. In this case, design wants, you to, wants us to change the dimensions of new image slightly, even though that commit is way back in our history. We will overcome this difficulty by doing the following. We will reorder the commits so one so the one we want to change is on top with git rebase dash i. We will commit dash dash amend to make the slight modification. Then we will reorder the commits back to how they were previously with git rebase dash i. Finally, we will move master to this updated part of the tree to finish the level via the method of your choosing. There are many ways to accomplish this overall goal. I enjoy you eyeing uh, cherry pick and we will see more of them later, but for now let's focus on this technique. Lastly, pay attention to the goal state here. Since we move the commits twice, they both get an apostrophe appended. Uh, <coughs> one more apostrophe is added for the commit we amend, which gives us the final form of the tree. That being said, I can compare levels now based on structures and relative apostrophe differences. As as long as your tree's master branch has the same structure and relative apostrophe differences, I'll give full credit. Okay. So. Whew. Hmm. Get. Check out new image. Not sure I'm doing this right. Git cherry pick. C2. God damn it! What is wrong with my computer? Ah. I need to go down and wiggle some wires. I'll do that after the stream.
screw you, Skype. I, I hate how Skype gives you no option but to put that thing in the corner. You know what? I'm, I'm midstream. I should quit Skype. That's just best practices for uh, streaming. <sighs> Skype is so goddamn intrusive. It's annoying. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah, I need an argument. Um, let's see. <sighs> Get rebase dash I. Master. Now I'm on new image, but I have to select C2. Nope, nope, I got it wrong. I got undo. Git rebase dash I. No, no, wait. Git checkout new image. This is finally getting a bit like a puzzle game, you know? Git rebase dash I master. Okay, okay. Um, I think I've screwed this up horribly. Somewhere, something has gone terribly wrong. Um, okay, guys, I'm in a bit of a situation. <clears throat> I'm stumped. So I do have to learn all of this stuff. Uh, <coughs> but I don't have to learn it all by tomorrow. And you know what? I've been streaming for about an hour now, so I think I'm going to quit here. Uh, I have to get to bed. I, I get up in... Uh, I don't have enough time to sleep. <laughs> uh, but anyhow. Uh, this, should, this should help me put together a, a better document for everyone. And I, 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 like, for, the, for tomorrow, I probably only have to know the basics. Um, I'll, make myself, I'll write myself a guide. I'll uh, guide everyone through. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure I can get everyone up to speed. At, I've already added... Uh, one of them to our current uh, GitLab account. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I can do this. I've been using Git for ages. Uh, <clears throat> I know that does it doesn't look like the case when I get to this uh, newer stuff, but keep in mind I've been sticking to the easy stuff like committing, branching, uh, <sighs> uh, pushing, pulling, y you know. And actually, that's something I noticed. Uh, he hasn't gone over pull in this. Uh, and I guess that's because there's no actual real changes in any of this. Uh, it's, it's all fake changes, you know? Uh, but I guess that's something he has to do. Um, but anyhow, yeah. So, if you watched that, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I know that's not my usual thing. And the one thing I noticed, there was a deafening lack of background music. Um... If, if I had one thing to change here, I would, you know, add some sort of light, uh, copyright-free background music to the background. Uh, I might find some to play in the background next time I stream something like this. I'm going to call this part one. Uh, I'll, prob I'll probably do more get streams in the future. Uh, prefer preferably when I'm uh, a bit more awake and ready and have a lot more time. So until then, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Have, have a good night, or a good day, you know, whatever. Blah, 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 outro, outro, outro. Um, God damn, my computer's doing it again. I'll uh, see you later.